state, of course, of modern state societies. And I will talk very briefly about Venezuela and Ecuador, Bolivia, but extremely briefly. Each country itself will be will merit the talk, of course. And then I'll talk finally in number five about a different kind of politics that some people see as arising in this, especially at the level of social movements, okay? and that could be uh, described at least one of those qualities in terms of communal, communitarian forms and politics. Okay. And whether the question of modernity is being rearticulated in the continent in any interesting way. So I'm not going to read all of it. I'm, I'm, I'll just speak around what I have there, but you have it as a reference, and, and we'll try to make it available to you as well. And beginning about, well, what's going on in, in Latin America today is being described in many, many different ways. From something that is very reformist to something that's very radical. Even some people talk about a bifurcation point, using sort of the imaginary of complexity theory. But I think a very good way to start is to think about it in terms of the conjunction. And, and as a, a description of a social formation as a fracture and confliction. So nobody's saying that this transformation is free of conflict. Everybody knows they're reading with tension, with conflict, with, with contradictions and so forth. The right is responding uh, in, in really amazing ways. Along multiple axes, planes, and scales, and I'm going to differentiate especially two, the level of the state and the level of social movements. And the project will look differently, and we will need to ask different questions at those two levels. And processes and uh, in search of temporary balances or the structural stabilities. And at the end, if I have time, I will try to articulate the question facing social movements, which is to what extent can, can they really develop infrastructure, relatively stable infrastructure, out of the alternative worldviews, ontologies, epistemes, etc. I will explain those terms as I, as I go along that are springing out uh, from different movements and communities. Uh, and process of struggle and negotiation, and it's always the case, of course. Um, so, and that Latin America might be a, a region uh, that is at, the, at that particular crossroads for many different reasons, and that the crossroads might have to do with the problematic of modernity. And uh, I will, uh, uh, my, my, one of the things that I think is, is happening is that if you were going to interpret what is happening in Latin America today, we have to see it in the terms of the double conjunction. The first, the first angle of the conjunction is the crisis of the hegemony of the neoliberal model of the, of the last four decades. Started in the 70s with the military regimes in Chile and Argentina, etc. Et uh, and that model seems to be in crisis. But there's a second model, a second uh, aspect of the conjunction, which is the crisis of a much longer term cultural, civilizational, political project, which is that of bringing about and implanting modernity, Euro-modernity in the continent. It's a process of 500 years. It's a process that obviously indigenous peoples in particular are very much uh, are trying to articulate a, 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 a critical, critical uh, relationship to that process. And if we look at, uh, at the uh, transformation from that global perspective, then we see that, that what is happening, uh, we will see it in a very different light. The national constituent assemblies in, in countries like Ecuador, Bolivia, Venezuela, to a lesser extent, uh, and certainly Ecuador and Bolivia in particular, has become a very important space for the meeting of both state social movements and other civil society actors in which this is negotiated. Boaventura de Sousa Santos refers to these new constitutions as a constitutionalism from below, and we're going to talk a little bit about those constitutional reforms as well. Okay, some statements about the transformation, and again, I'm not going to be reading all of this. Rafael Correa, in his inaugural speech, says the following, Latin America is not going through an epoch of changes, but through a genuine change of epoch, a change of epoch. Again, the idea that there's something new and something remarkable happening in South America today, again, we'll ask the question of how do we assess that. Álvaro García Linera, the Vice President of Bolivia, is still today says that the Constituent Assembly uh, is intended to obviously bring about a new constitution, a new idea of the nation and the nation the state, one that really reflects the fact that Bolivia is a plural society that is indigenous and non-indigenous, that is liberal and communitarian. So again, here, what I want to remark is these concepts of, on the one hand, it is liberal and it's communitarian, and that we have to develop 
or come up with a constitution that, that really reflects that reality. Uh, Luis Macas, the leader of the largest indigenous confederation of Ecuador, says, Nuestra lucha is epistemic and politica, y politica, our struggle is both epistemic and political, meaning by that we are not just struggling for uh, economic justice, but that that's very important, we are not just struggling for multiculturalism, that's also could be important, could be a trap. But we are really, our struggle it goes even farther beyond, it's at the level of, 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 of the cosmo, of the, of the worldview, at the level of knowledge, at the level of the configuration of knowledge, and the different kinds of knowledge that are, are, are meant to inform the design of a different social uh, order. But Jesus Martin Barbero, what is at stake is the sentido del artero latinoamericano, and the sentido del artero latinoamericano is crumbling down in a way and it's been recomposed in so many different ways. We can talk about that in the question and answer period, if any of you is interested in that. And I just wanted to mention that Jesus Martin was going to be, uh, was going to be giving this kind of a speech, and he wasn't able to come because of, of, of poor health. So I wished him to uh, send him uh, our good thoughts for his recovery. Uh, Felix Pazzipaco, a uh, Mara sociologist and intellectual who actually was the first minister of education of Evo Morales, said this in a conversation in Chapel Hill, the social movements of Bolivia are about the total transformation of liberal society, the total transformation of liberal society. What does that mean? So we're going to try to figure out what he meant by that. And Aníbal Quijano, one of our you know, very long-standing, prominent Latin American intellectuals from Peru, says it is a time of struggles. And Latin America was the original space of the modern colonial system. It marked its founding moment. Today, it is at last the very center of world resistance against the pattern of power and the production of alternatives to it. So this is something special going on in Latin America, according to these readings. And why is that so? We try to spell it out as we move along. And so here is the argument that I want to make in a nutshell. The argument is that the current transformations, cultural, social, political, economic transformations, uh, confront us with two potentially complementary but also competing projects. A third modernizations based on anti-lead neoliberal development model possibly leading, possibly, all of this potential to post-capitalist economies and alternative forms of modernity, what Garcia Linera calls una modernidad satisfactoria, meaning a modernity that works for everybody, a modernity that brings about justice and rights uh, for everybody, especially for the excluded, systematically excluded, or also decolonial projects based on more radical societal transformation, there's a different set of practices for instance, indigenous uh, and communal, but not only those, and we can talk about that later on as well, leading to a post-liberal society, perhaps what a number of people call a pluriverse, that includes potentially alternatives to modernity. So we'll talk a little bit about modernity in the last part of the presentation, but for now I want to stay with, the, with, the, uh, Latin, with South America. So the question for me becomes, is it possible to go beyond capital as the central or only or hegemonic or dominant form of economy? beyond your modernity as a dominant cultural construction of social, of social natural life, and beyond the state as the central form of institutionalization of the social. So post-capitalist, uh, post-liberal, and post-statist, and as you can imagine, this requires a profound transformation of the modern colonial structures of power that have prevented it now. So is any of this really going on? Is anything in the continent that suggests that this is not just sort of a naive conceit on the part of this particular risk, uh, Personal research, intellectual, activist, intellectual, whatever, and I can tell you more about my own identity in this context later on. Okay, the key criterion is going to be what is happening with the development model? What is happening here? Are they the basic premises of the development model of the past 500, I mean, of the past 50 <laughs> years, 50, 60 years, and maybe even, even beyond that? Is, is it really being questioned today or not, and how? And we're going to see that the level of the states, the answer is very iffy at, at best. Okay, and then a very quick a few things about Venezuela, Ecuador, and Bolivia. I'm not going to read all of this, it's there for your reference, those of you who are not familiar with this. And just one thing about each of them Venezuela, December 2nd, 2006, uh, was the defeat of a referendum proposed by President Hugo Chavez for a new constitution uh, in support of the social.